folks, dude here, and well, this is gonna be kind of a cool video. We are now gonna be speaking with the one, the only, uh, well, this guy. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the 80s podcast channel, please? Hi, I'm Shell Jones. I'm with G-Wax Armory. We're located in Tulsa. One of the partners with uh, G-Wax Armory that's reintroducing the uh, Cat 15 Mark II single polymer lower receiver for ARs. Sounds like a plan. Well, the original company basically, uh, all right, the, the, the short story is essentially um, there is some shady deal stuff that I, I'm really not privy to, and I really don't want to go into the, you know, who did what and who shot John and all the rest of it. Uh, the short story is essentially the two clamshell halves were made off location, and the BATF said you could do that. And uh, then what happened was is they basically said, yeah, that's cool and all. You guys are making these in separate halves, and you can bring them into your own property have them stuck together, and uh, that's legit. Well, behind the scenes, the BATF switched up and said, you know what, guys, uh, we changed up, but we didn't tell you. So basically, these guys were now running illegal, and uh, under their infamous auspices of the BATF, they basically screwed them, which is what they're really good at doing. Uh, so basically, the, the guy had the choice of either seeing some time in the Gray Bar Motel or giving up his FFL and basically stating, I will not make Bang Bangs any longer. Goodbye. So basically, the uh, the stuff came up, came up on uh, AR15.com, and they said, look, we have a room full of equipment here. It makes these. We want to sell this. Uh, give us a number. And um, I'm going to gather this probably did max out your credit card, didn't it? Say again? Uh, the purchase price on these probably did max out your credit card, right? No. We, we did well with this deal, and... Uh... We're very happy to have the equipment and, uh, again, reintroducing this product that seems to have a uh, very good following and write-ups. Well, that sounds like a plan. Um, now, is this a private company, or are you guys going to be on the stock market? I mean, uh, let, me, let me switch over here real quick, because I mean, I'm looking right now at the website of uh, gwaxarmory.com, which is the site that's actually producing, selling, and uh, is the marketing side for the CAV-15 Mark IIs. Uh, but your actually parent company is GWAX Defense, and what does GWAX Defense do? Uh, GWAX is actually a separate company. GWAX Defense is actually a separate company that does gunshot location and detection technology that offers a man wearable system for uh, Department of Defense and law enforcement. Okay. So GWAX Armory, again, is a separate company that was formed up to support the firearms needs for that company. Uh, and then recently this year, when the opportunity to uh, purchase the CAV-15 <laughs> machines and IP and technical pieces of that came on, we saw a uh, very opportunity to uh, reintroduce it to the market. Uh, I had shot it before, and uh, as well as my dad, and knew the quality and the benefits of a polymer in a single a single piece for an AR-15. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, what is his name? Sinistro, uh, Sinistro Rifleman or something like that. I'll, I'll put the links in here and what have you, but the guy does abuse testing like you don't want to know, and he actually was one of the guys that actually worked with the original, um, well, he actually worked with Cavalry Arms since they're, you know the time the thing came out, and uh, he did some serious abuse testing. I was really, really impressed. I mean, literally, he did the drive over it, he did the sand testing, and, you know, I, I really love these AK versus AR guys that basically go, oh, three specks of sand, poops where it lives, what have you. There's a reason why the M16's been around since, like, you know, the late 50s, because it frickin' works. Yeah, he's, uh, he actually transferred the lower that he has over 50,000 rounds. He shot several uppers, or a couple, several uppers with that. In fact, during a uh, three-gun match, he talks about in uh, a block he put up, where uh, a dually truck ran over uh, his buddy's aluminum AR-15 as well as the CAV-15 Mark II uh, equipped lower. And it uh, he was able to pick that up and go continue to shoot. Had a little dent in the, uh, yeah. the bus stock, but uh, functionally he was able to finish the match while the, uh, the buffer tube was bent enough that the uh, metal one was done for the day. I, I saw that. It, lo it looked like basically it had a dent in the side and a slight crack, but the thing was functionally still workable, which is really saying something when you drive over it with a car or a truck. Um, all right, so basically, uh, let me go through my list of questions here, and uh, 
We'll go from there in my formerly nicotine stained fingers. Uh, this is basically the blow where my son shot this last Sunday. <laughs> the one with 50k? Actually, still functioning. Yes. Damn. Uh, kind of reminds me back of the times when I said, okay, uh, Marine Corps looks like fun. I'm in the Marine Corps, and they handed me the M60 that looked like it had been drugged through uh, some of the worst holes of Vietnam, and I swear, shooting that thing, I swear the cover, cover was going to pop off in my face, and that thing was going to fire out a battery. I, I swore it was not going to work right. Yeah. Uh, so basically, let's see. This is uh, roughly the same plastic. It's nylon 6, roughly the same stuff they make Glocks out of. Tool. Uh, basically, you got the same tooling, obviously. How long does it actually take to make a CAV arm, or well, actually, in this case, a GWAC CAV 15 Mark II? How much time actually goes into each piece to make? Hmm. I'd say that's a tough question for me to answer as we're just ramping up our production. Uh, but I can tell you that there is uh, you know, the actual uh, plastic molding doesn't take very long. Uh, welding the two pieces together it takes a little more time, and uh, the cleanup of the flashing to uh, give it a good appearance, and then of course assembly, the lower parts kit, that stock and pin, takedown pins. Yeah, um, it's kind of cool. There's um, uh, American Built Arms, also known as AB Arms 11 Bravo, here on YouTube. He actually has videos where he's molding his um his forends. And it seems like you just see the, the the mold snap shut, the thing fills up with plastic and spits out a part like roughly every 15 to 20 seconds. Yeah. The actual plastic piece is a lot like that, yep. Okay, I got some fan questions for you. Um, right. buddy of mine by the name of uh, Mike the NASCAR fan, actually is a YouTube user, says he purchased a number of cab arm A1 butt stocks for the 20-inch rifle builds, uh, purchased a DPMS aluminum trapdoor butt plate to put on them. Since the trapdoor plates that Cab Arms provides are flimsy rubber one-piece design, uh, with this combo, there's a small 16 to 32 inch so gap where the receiver meets the buttstock. This employs either the combination is not designed for it. Are you guys going to do a retrofit and actually come up with your own form of buttstock or butt plate? Yes, we are. Uh, we should have that out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, what exactly we're going to do, but we're looking at several different design designs uh, as we speak. All right, now also you got the other competition, obviously. You got the other guys going, oh, we make a plastic receiver, and it's completely bulletproof. I I've seen some of the pictures, and I'm not going to name names, but let's just say that they're, um, uh, they're named after fruit, okay? And they're just nuts. So they're crazy nut fruit guys, okay? And uh, I've seen them where they basically crank the receiver extension in, and it shears off at the rear tank down pin, and they go, oh, no, no, you didn't assemble it right. You didn't chuck it in the vise correctly. You know what? Every time I've ever put a lower in a vise and I torque down on the receiver extension, I've never sheared one off. Uh, but there's actually some guys that are asking on the uh, like the uh, the firearms blog. Uh, that listing is going to be. I'm going to put it right there. But uh, the firearms blog story where I was actually going back and forth with people. And I had some other questions here as well. And um, are you planning to make a uh, variety that does not have um, the, the full butt stock, but have a, an availability to screw in a receiver extension to make it more like a CAR-15 or uh, your M forgeries? Absolutely. We're, we're uh, going to start that design effort here soon. Uh, we've been speaking to lots of people, kind of like you do. We're uh, getting feedback. We're looking online at comments. And then just looking at the, the nature of what you can do with plastics. And we will move towards an adjustable butt stock here in the future. That's um, sweet. I mean, that, that's something that... Come to a conclusion of what the name of it might be, or but uh, we want to stick to, you know, the same quality attributes that the CAV-15 Mark II, the GWAX Armory, is going to produce. You know, it, it meets the same uh, structure and durability, and uh, we can back it with the same kind of warranty that we're going to be backing this one with. Sounds like a plan. The, the, the other thing that seems to be happening is basically, um, if you do your research and you do some reading up about it, if you go on the Cav Arms website itself, they actually have the physical history of the, des of the design. And actually what it came out to be was two pieces of plastic screwed together. And what they found out is it really didn't work. So they said, okay, two pieces of plastic welded and screwed together. And they're like, you know what? Why are we putting all these extra screws in here? Let's just come up with a couple of different designs and redesign it and make it better. So eventually they came up with saying, okay, two pieces of plastic welded together to make one piece of plastic. And that's essentially what you guys are still making. Exactly. 
we're using the same molds and the same uh, materials. All right, obviously there's going to be the guys going, okay, well, you can get Glocks in two different colors, and you can get all these different plastics in different colors. Um, are you guys going to come up with, like, primary, uh, like, you know, like camo stuff, like olive green, olive drab? We're going to stick to the basic colors for sure, which is the black, the tan, and the OD green, which have all proven to be popular in the past. But we know that one of our uh, differentiators in the marketplace and we also know that the market is big about customizing their own firearms. So we want to offer uh, different limited color runs throughout the year. We'll be posting those on our webpage and uh, making sure our dealers that we have relationships with uh, are able to get, you know, a certain quantity each. So we can get some pinks, purples. All right, now, now i got to ask you the silly the question pink, here. Oh. You basically are squirting through a bunch of plastic pellets. You're mending it. You're, you're basically mail, melting it to make it into your uppers and your lowers and all your other various plastic parts. And, of course, in your case, you're basically making a complete lower. What happens when you mix one color on top of the other color and keep squirting it through to the molds? Well, you get, you get a couple of them that happen to swirl as the colors push through, which makes, I think, uh, another neat option or uh, opportunity for a person who might want a pink and black swirly uh, lower and we'd be uh, looking at those, and if they, you know, meet the quality assurance checks, then we would put them uh, for sale as well. I swear I saw some of those on Gunbroker. There was a run of, like, the last ones coming out of cab arms, and there was a bunch of them on Gunbroker. And they had all kinds of different colors. Yes. We bought 33 of those. Take a look at them. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, hang on a second here. What did you do before you got into G-Wax? I served in the United States Army for 22 years. Uh, what rank were you when you left? I was a lieutenant colonel when I left. Okay, I, hang on a second. I'm an officer. Being a, being a former army officer, you probably read up about Patton, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, like the bit where Patton said, okay, I'm, a, I'm from a family that's well-to-do. I want to win this exercise. I heard a story about him driving a line of tanks, pulling into a gas station, saying, how much gas you got? And the guy goes, um... Well, basically, I have a, uh, I have a, a tank load of gas, and uh, how much do you want? And Patton looks at him and said, I'll buy it all. Plunked out a bunch of cash on the table said, every tank that comes through here, you fill it up. And that's how he won his exercise. That sounds very much like something that he would do. Yeah, he's a big hero of ours. I was an armor officer as well, so. Hoo-ah. Okay, um, are you guys going to make anything in purple? Absolutely. Probably later this year. First, you know, the first priority is just getting some black and tans out there, which seem to be the most popular. Okay, um, somebody was asking about UT. I guess that would be Utah or something. Is the orange. I, I guess it's like kind of like um, uh, confiscuity orange, like you can't miss it orange. But that's one of the colors they're asking for, like, you know, kind of maybe, maybe it was like a blaze or a fluorescent orange. Uh, we've been looking at several different uh, universities particularly here in Oklahoma, which happens to be a very pro. Oh, you. Uh, oh, yeah. Name. That's a big name. And so we're, we're looking at uh, looking at putting out, uh, you know, your color of your school lowers with matching uh, furniture as well. All right. You know it. You love it. You're going to have to really probably address this, but um, are you thinking of doing anything in maybe like a zombie color scheme? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. I uh, definitely want to do something in a, uh, almost like a neon green, and maybe even add some glow-in-the-dark stuff to it. All right, well, I'm going to have to show for one of my buddies. Um, there's a friend of mine who lives down in Florida, and he basically does some really, I, I, I cannot tell you how sick the work that he does is, um, but he's a good friend of mine named Scott Hartman, and he's down in Florida, not too far from the mouse, which puts him near Orlando, and his company is known as Hydro Print Services, and um, Shell, you've seen some of his work. What'd you think? Uh, I think it's pretty fabulous. The whole idea of hydro coating your, your weapon, along with your other gear, uh, really opens up the customization piece of the market I was talking to you about earlier. And yeah. um, I, I actually asked him how tough it is. He, one of his weapons, he's actually done drop throw and everything, other kind of testing he could come up with. The high points are starting to wear off a little bit. 
But he said basically to get this stuff back off, you're literally going to have to probably bead blast it. It's very, very tough. So uh, that's kind of cool stuff. I have personal experience with it yet, and I'm looking forward to checking that out. Yeah, it's got some pretty cool, interesting things going on there. Um, now, in terms of your warranty, I've noticed on your website, let me jump back over here to uh, your GWAX. Uh, let me go over here to, I think you have it under the About Us, um, or is it Technical Support? Uh, it's on your Technical Support, and it's actually it's now actually on my screen, so let me zip through here so everybody can see it, because I'm running this sucker in HD. Uh, basically, you are honoring the previous lowers as well for a warranty item. That's cool, man. That, that's probably been the best day of warranty in the business. It's, uh, you know, the product's got that uh, durability, and we uh, believe in it so much so, and, of course, we're using the same molds and materials, so why not back uh, the Mark IIs from prior? So essentially, if it's completely kiboshed, like their dog got a hold of it and ate the back end of it, you basically then just, um, you crush that one, generate a new vi uh, uh, new cereal plate, and basically it comes out as a G-Wax? Uh, yeah, it would be named marked uh, G-Wax Armory Power Series Cat 15 Mark II. Uh, the customer who has a damaged one can uh, would uh, first get a hold of us and get a, a work order number on that. And uh, they uh, need to strip their parts off. And then we would, you know, the lower parts of the kit, and uh, ship that to us, and then along with $30, and then we would replace it and ship it back to whomever their FFL is. And they would be responsible for their uh, transaction cost of that as well. Uh, that's pretty cool. I've never seen this one picture. It, it, it literally had me in tears. This guy literally had posted on his forum board about his... Um, I want to say generically it's a Glock 17. Well, basically the thing laying around, and of all dogs he had, he had a pit bull puppy. The pit bull puppy said, you know what? This looks really tasty. He proceeded to eat the pistol grip. Holy cow. <laughs> proceeded, literally ate the pistol grip off of the firearm. So uh, the guy sent it back to Glock. Glock was like, um, what happened to us? Did you drop it on your garbage disposal? Because no, my puppy got a hold of it. And uh, needless to say, they basically, um, they crushed that one and then uh, simply generated him a new handgun. That's great. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, excuse me, i got a tigger moment needing to take place here because, well, coffee. Mm. Mm. So, guys, you're, you're basically a very new company. You're coming out of the, on your hard charger. You basically got to get this thing just ramped up, get attention, let people know about it. I mean, I was trying to get things to dovetail a little better, but you know what? I got a lot of really good questions off the firearms blog thing, so I'm really not regretting it too much. I really wanted things to link up a little better, and people do have a heads-up video, so they've had you know some prior notice that this video is coming. Is there anything that you would really want to impart to them, like you know, um, behind the scenes, like you know, like uh, go to this gun show, or, or you know, we're actually going to be attending the shot show, or you know, good stuff like that. We definitely be attending the shot show, and I'm still looking at all the different shows that are out there to uh, pick and choose, to go, you know, mainly our focus right now is to get this product up and running so we can get these boxes and shipped out to the dealers that have already come to us and a lot of pre-orders that we've already gotten, as well as get some out for uh, folks, you know, to do some test and evaluation and get, get our name out that, uh, you know, the product's high quality, we're backing it. Well, I mean, uh, also, you see the other stuff, too. I mean, let me... Let me click over here one more page over and I'm going to show the link for the um, the the AR-15 Kaboom that I sent you the link for uh, okay mm -hmm. basically I, I've I've noticed this and I've made note of this before on another video but basically the uh, the tan lower that had the, the catastrophic and the, I don't know what in the hell do to, to his weapon to make it do this I mean that 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 was some very impressive explosive type damage and um it looks like the stock held up. I mean, yeah, it did pop the uh, the magazine well, and it did split down the seam, and but it basically looked like it held up better than the upper receiver did. That's that's saying something, man. I mean, that polymer really took a serious hit and held up. Yeah, without fully understanding what happened, you would think, oh, that that lower, you know, didn't survive very well. But when you look at all the facts 
behind it and you lift the pick up or that, you know, I'm wondering how, how much that guy got hurt when that happened. I mean, how the hell do you pop a receiver extension? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a barrel extension. He did. I mean, the barrel's intact, yeah. but the barrel extension is just like, it's like four parts. It's gone. Um, yeah. Pretty much everything on that, you know, from the, oh, hell, from the trigger forward is gone, including the bolt carrier group, including the uh, the bolt itself. I mean, he sheared, of course, the extractor. He blew up the upper receiver. I mean, it was really a hell of a bang. And it looks like the stock pretty much held up. I mean, I'm pretty impressed here. And there's a video, and I'm going to let give you a heads up on this one. The dude chucked one of those, um, uh, let's just call him the Looney Fruit Lower Receiver. And uh, you guys can extrapolate from there as to what we're talking about. But the Looney Fruit Lower Receiver, he put it in a hydraulic press and proceeded to put a side load on the magwell. And, of course, it flexed and, you know, of course, returned. He did that to an alloy, and, of course, it flexed and didn't return. But I don't know if that's really a good test. I mean, you're basically flexing a thin part of plastic that kind of pops back anyway. I'd really want to see the thing seriously abuse tested to the point where it goes bang. And and I don't know if they really did that good of a showing in that regard. What do you what do you think? I think any product should be tested in its relative operating environment, not so much taken out of out of place with that. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of weak. I, I thought it was kind of a weak test. Cat fifteen, uh, because it's a single polymer lower, it gains a lot of rigidity and weight savings uh, being a single unit. Uh, I would I would reckon that probably inside like the pistol grip and inside the stock is almost like a honeycomb except for the areas for the like the storage area. Correct. Yep. So anytime you basically add like um your triangulation, of course you know with your engineering side of it, you add triangulation, you basically make things a lot stronger by adding like a lot of ninety five and forty degrees all bridging into each other. So that thing is I, I can tell you for a fact. Of course I got two lowers myself. The things really don't flex. I mean they feel very solid for the weight that they are and. They were almost nothing. I mean, you, you have one of those things in your backpack, and just as itself, I mean, the backpack is sliding off your shoulder because it weighs a little. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, if you take a, a standard A2 lower receiver made of, with the metal parts, you will find that uh, Cat 15 populated equally will be 14 ounces lighter. Uh, my Colt, let's see, my, my Colt uh, 76239 upper with the calf. Yeah, everybody's going on about, oh, yeah, it's so light that, you know, the balance point's going to be way, way, way... It, it is front-heavy. I mean, but the balance point is basically, for me, in my eye, the balance point is right at the D-ring. Maybe maybe a skosh forward of that, basically, at the D-ring. And um, I think the 76239 is actually going to be a little lighter because, you know, of course, less less bore size. But the balance point is not that much different. I mean, you know, they sit there and go on about, oh, yeah, well, that buttstock is so light that... It doesn't do well, and all this other happy horse mess, and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? It really is kind of, if you set it up as light as possible, the balance point is very close. I mean, 14 ounces, you're really not going to notice in terms of a balance point. Saying the thing is like, you pick up the back end, and it just flips out of your hands because the front end weighs so much. And that's really kind of a serious yeah, argument. Yeah. I'd say pick one up and go shoot it. Find out for yourself. <laughs> it, exactly. I mean, you know, that's the easiest way to test out the Ferrari is you take it out back when the guy's not looking, you do a couple of burnouts. Exactly. Yeah, it really goes to say, I mean, you know, there's always like the, you know, the armchair commandos going, well, I've looked at this, and I've done the paperwork, and I've read up a lot of stuff, and, you know, that really doesn't mean anything. It's when you actually take it out to the range, and you put two side-by-side of a standard configuration, and one of yours, and you shoot them side-by-side, and say, okay, this one has a little more muzzle flip, this one seems to have not muzzle flip, and this one seems to, you know, kick or torque like the, you know, I've heard that about Glocks, they say Glocks actually, when you fire them, they really don't have recoil, but they seem to have recoil and torque because you're actually feeling the bullet kick the, the handgun to the side because 80% of the weight is in the slide, and you take a slide off a Glock, it weighs nothing. And uh, they seem to actually almost like twist in your hand. I've never noticed that. That's just me, but it, I've never noticed it. People who are making comments like that aren't typically, I haven't seen one, but the, the people who own the Cav 15 Mark II lower, uh, you don't hear that. No, usually they're too busy ripping the hell out of the targets and have a good time. <laughs> That's right. All right, so uh, as the point of exercise, when is this thing actually going to hit the stores? We're looking at the next several weeks, and we should have it out there for you all. Sweet. All right, so basically if you're comparing... The thing we're focusing on, dude, is you know, making sure 
ensure that our quality assurance and consistency of the product is right. Well, that makes, that makes no sense to put on something that's a piece of crap. <laughs> that's right. And again, you do have the best damn guarantee in the business. If it's broken, uh, <clears throat> can't talk today. If it's broken, you basically send it back. It gets worked on. If you have one of the old ones, you send it back. It gets worked on. And basically, with the, the the long and short of that one is, if you have one, it gets serviced. It gets worked on. Yes. Thanks for pointing that out because that is that is great news for everybody who had one and will get one. All right. I, I'm, I'm going to try to save this for the absolute last thing, but um, compared to your contemporaries, how's the price look on this thing? I mean, that seemed to be one of the firearms blog things. They were looking at the numbers, and um, let me just jump over here real quick. I, it, it might take me a second to find the, the article, but uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, obviously, you're not making a $100,000 titanium AR. That's some other guys up in, um, <laughs> up in Montana. I don't know what the hell they're going to do with that thing. I think it's just kind of like bragging rights to say they actually made it. Yes. Oh, let's see here. It's actually pretty cool. Oh, it's really cool. Only problem is $100,000 AK. I'm um, sorry, AR. I mean, you know, that's like a gold-plated AK. What do you do with it? Okay, let's go over here real quick. Uh, basically, the article that it was listed in Firearms Blog was showing a price point of um, $199 completed for $299. And that seemed to be one of the arguments that people are having back and forth was price point. They were really kind of concerned about it. You know, like one guy was saying, if they could lower the price, uh, he'd like one in, you know, the orange guy. I'd like one in orange, and I put a 22 upper on it. Um, another guy was saying, basically, you know, he's comparing c comparing it to the uh, the crazy fruit variety, uh, loony fruit variety. Um, and, uh, you know, the guy's going on about, like, they can't justify because it it's plastic. You know, they, they really seem to just kind of not really get into the nuts and bolts of it. They're just like, oh, it's plastic. It's easy to make. It's so cheap. It's like, guys, no. It's, it, <laughs> you don't understand, like, the molds themselves are, like, sixty to $150,000 a piece. Yeah, there's a lot of capital investment. And then again, uh, you know, there's some labor pieces to this. So, we, uh, we, uh, and then as far as addressing, you know, the Temporary though, or you know, what you want to compare it to. Uh, the other brands are not a single polymer lower, offering as much uh, rigidity and durability. So, and with our attention to the quality of service and warranty, I think that you know we're out of that ballpark for sure. And you know, I reserve to introduce what the actual pricing is for you exclusively today. Oh, we have an exclusive price break, okay, or an exclusive price discount. Uh, I know, if you buy 10 of them, you get one free, right? <laughs> Certainly. No, Baker, Baker's no, dozen. Or we're going to go with the drip lower and sell that for 179 That includes your two check-down pens, your 564 one-inch roll pen to hold your buffer deep pen, and, of course, our, uh, our buttstock. And we're also equipping each of our lowers with a Hogue hand grip. So basically, you're coming out of the box, pretty much just stick some guts in it and shoot. Correct. Or you can get have us stick the guts in it, and we'll send pan the buffer and carbine buffer and spring for two hundred sixty nine dollars, fully populated, ready to ship. All right. Now here, here's the dirty little secret. Not too many people are thinking about. Um, if you look at the way the market is right now. Aim Surplus is sold out. Bravo Company is sold out. Uh, at least 10 companies on the websites right now are listing pretty much every one of their barrels, every one of their uppers as back ordered. Uh, if you go on Brownells, I looked at Brownells yesterday and there ain't squat. If you have these things full up and ready to go, you are so far ahead of the game that most other people right now are just clamoring for parts because. Uh, the election that's going to be taking place is kind of worrying a lot of people. As usual, we saw it back when um, uh, Mr. Lewinsky was trying to get back in the White House. And um, when, um, well, the guy that we have now is trying to get in. So basically, if you have a completed upper, that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I also want to highlight, dude, that uh, the F-15 Mark II is... If not the only, there may be another one out there. I don't, I haven't seen it that lends itself to 45 ACP upper because of the gun magazine. Well, specifically designed to take the uh, 45 caliber grease gun magazine with a Han Precision uh, insert. 
I've seen those. <laughs> I've seen those. You know what? Uh, for 45 caliber carbine, um, the upper is probably going to be the hardest thing to source. And of course, you have Olympic arms right now. And, you know, it, it's hit or miss whether their stuff is any good or not. And um, their lowers, eh. I mean, I'm really not too impressed. Every time I've seen Olympic arms, it's been, it's been okay. I mean, it, you know, I've kind of in the old mindset of uh, anything for AR, I want to go ABC. Armalite, uh, Bushmaster, or Colt. And I really don't like Bushmaster because of politics for stuff they've done in the past, but they do work. I mean, I had a dissipator up and their thing was dead nuts. It worked great. Um, but Olympic Arms, eh, I'm really not too impressed with their magazine setups. I mean, it looked kind of cheesy. And uh, the other thing, too, is you're also losing some weight. And you're talking a grease gun mag. That thing's a tank. It certainly is. But it gives you that option. Uh, and I can see, uh, you know, a little bit deeper ammunition that way. And of course, a 45 caliber out of a 16 inch barrel, um, you can shoot that thing without ears. It's very comfortable to shoot a 45 carbine without hearing protection. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but I think uh, shooting a 45 ACP upper is a lot of fun. Oh, it's a hoot, man! It's like it's like a big 22, except you get to watch stuff really fly. <laughs> oh man, done it a few times. Done it a few times. It's like. 22s are going tick, tick, tick. The 45 goes katang. <laughs> Good times. All right, Shell. So in closing, what do you think would um, would be your parting shot to the, the competition? Well, I certainly don't want to beat up all the other guys out there. I think everybody's doing a good job in the other the other gun manufacturers. Uh, you know, we're just coming into this thing to offer a uh, product that differentiates itself with the weight savings, durability, and of course our quality of service that we're going to add to it, and of course the colors, and the ability to do multiple uh, caliber uppers. And I appreciate my time with you today. Absolutely. I've actually seen the cab arms being shot with a, um, I think I saw shot with a 50 Beowulf, man. <laughs> some, some maniac who's a total recoil junkie decided to see if it would work, and it worked fine, but it looked like he was getting tossed around. Send me a link to that. I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find it, but man, I'll tell you what, dude looked like he was enjoying himself. But yeah, it was he was definitely moving around when he was firing the rounds off. And speaking I, of... If you firing... on Facebook, you can follow us there as well as our website, and we should be joining AR15.com soon as well. And if you're wondering what he looks like, come on, computer, let's go. That's right. That shell right there. That shell right there That's holding the bear head. at 50. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently you like to play with the, a little bit of the big toys yourself there. I love guns, you know. I have a long history with the military with the weapons, so it's good to be in this market. Well, it's hard to beat the 50. The 50 is just a fun toy. Oh, man. Yeah. With, with the exception of headspace issues, the Maw Deuce is just an awesome piece. Sure is. All right, Shell, I appreciate you very much for your time, and, um, Folks, if you really want to see this stuff, and you got to see this stuff, uh, it's a very easy website. You just wish to go to GWAX Armory. That would be Golf, Whiskey, Alpha, Charlie, Alpha, Romeo, Mike, Ocean, Robert, Yankee.com. GWAXArmory.com, and um, just click on the links and... Uh, well, check them out. Stay tuned. This stuff is coming down the pike, and it is very, very cool. You two can have yourself your very own cab arms. Well, not anymore, but it's now the, the G-Wax Armory Cav 15. Cav 15 Mark II. Yeah, I mean, you're, you, it's kind of cool you guys are still doing a homage, too. I mean, you're not saying uh, it's G-Wax Armory 15. Eh, you're saying it's the Cav 15, so you're giving the guys credit where credit is due. reintroduce it well glad to see it's come back i mean you know sometimes um i really wish the the old ideas would come back but unfortunately i don't think tucker's going to come back anytime soon and start making his cool cars anymore so it, we got to make do with what we can find that's right all right shall i do appreciate your time and thank you for being here on the 80s podcast channel and as usual here in the 80s podcast channel i'm gonna tell you you know eat good keeping the 10 ringing um well, with a G-Wax Armory Cav 15 Mark II, can you do anything but? <laughs> oh, good times.